Okay, we got Insight 145. Maybe you saw her hair blow and flow with the wind. Again, notice that the soft motion of the hair is soothing to the eyes and mind. Its motion is interesting to the mind on many levels. We have discussed before that the information being transmitted to the mind is on many levels. For it is not merely the movement of the hair. It is the color, the knowledge that it is a woman's hair, the sine wave created, etc. So here we are focusing on the very details of how is it that the mind is really focused on the hair and why the hair is dancing in the wind is influencing the mind. As you notice, it's on many levels and you become conscious of it and be able to spot it, spot the reasons and not be impacted by them. You don't have to falsely attribute what you feel with the motion of the hair that is impacting your mind. You don't have to falsely attribute that to being to being coming from a sexual attraction and instinct. <coughs> In other words, you don't have to just say to yourself, oh, I'm just naturally, instinctively attracted to her and that's why the hair motion is making me feel so attracted to her. Now you will realize why. Insight 146. Sure enough, breasts are prominent. Prominent means outstanding, means uh, uh, cry, quite um, different than other things. So let's say you have some people. Person one, person two, person three, person four, and now, uh, and then person five. Person five, you know, there's these other guys, and then there's person five. Person five is very tall, so he's very prominent. He stands out from the rest. He's quite different. So sure enough, breasts are prominent, three-dimensional objects. Therefore. This fact adds more intrigue to the mind. Having grasped, meaning understood, somewhat the idea of the breasts, <coughs> meaning having, having experienced the, this, having understood, the mind has understood, engaged in understanding the size of the breasts, having grasped somewhat the idea of the breasts, you would like to experience them physically. Just the thought, anticipation, and or imagination of what you would do and how you would handle the breasts might urge your genitals to become active. So the three-dimensional objects, so you're aware, aware of this when you see it, and so when you are observing with your mind the breast or the breasts, there's two of them, so therefore you're aware of this, it makes a double impact there. And then you don't see it, you're not aware of it only from frontal, you're aware that this is a three-dimensional object and if the person is in motion so that you can see sideways, so you, you're aware that, oh, this uh, is making an impression on your mind both frontal and from the sides. And so therefore, your mind is quite engaged in trying to observe and understand this physical object. Let's say you're seeing it only from the front. Still, your mind tries to grasp its uh, understanding of the whole object from all sides. And so therefore, it, its imagination of the mind works even more harder, more engaged in trying to ascertain, trying to measure um, Try to understand and know, to calculate the dimensions of this breast or breasts, including the nipple. That's an added thing that, again, the mind is observing, Ob observing and absorbing.
So the three dimensional objects, they're prominent, they're more outstanding than others, therefore it makes a big impression. Uh, I remember uh, speaking to a guy who was saying that he was quite uh, impacted by the very round uh, buttocks of certain women. And uh, the way he would describe it was very, very impactful, exactly, quite impactful, very round, and so similarly quite impactful to the mind. Having grasped somewhat the idea of the breasts, you would like to experience them physically. Right, so we had talked about this earlier, very early on, I believe inside two, <clears throat> or somewhere along there, that when the mind gets engaged in thinking about something, right, finds the features pleasurable and interactive, oh, I like the, uh, the features, and not only do you see them, you want to touch them, you want to get to know it by physical means, by any and all means, not just the touch of your eye, for it to touch your eye by the light, but you want to touch it and engage in it in, in every possible way that you can imagine, including physically. You want to get to experience the object. Often you might see dogs. I don't have a dog, but I, I could imagine this could be a possibility, why a dog would chew on uh, various objects, um, such as the re remote control or other things. The dog could be frustrated of seeing others, other adults, interacting with these various objects around the house. And the dog may also want to interact, but he cannot interact as an adult does. Most of the dog's interaction with objects is by eating and chewing, so he does that. He gets his satisfaction of interacting by chewing and interacting and licking and all these things. So that's what he engages with the remote control, getting an experience of it, however he can find, he can interact with it. <clears throat> just a thought and anticipation or and or imagination of what you would do and how you would handle the breasts right might urge your gen genitals to become active yeah so this is that feeling that we're talking about you're thinking of this and it's really impactful to your mind you're seeing the breasts and you're like wow you're imagining it how it is and how then, then you want to interact with it and then when you want to interact with it uh, you're now feeling it quite strongly the connection the interaction you're imagining it and so therefore um, your genitals your privates become it might become active uh, because you're imagining it happening you're imagining engaging in interaction with it, with the object, <coughs> or <coughs> with the objects or persons, and so therefore your your body is um, um, the object of the breasts. So you're focusing on the breasts, and you want to interact with it, and so you um, you, you your body reacts to. Uh, to the imagine, imaginative interaction as if it is actually happening. Because as many have said before, many others have said that your, uh, your, your body or your, you can't tell the difference between reality and what is happening in the mind. It just reacts to it <clears throat> as if it is rea real. Insight 147 describes a little more about why this attraction happens. Uh, this, nothing, this is nothing out of the ordinary. If you think of a meal or a type of eatable that you particularly like, and if you start thinking about it, and start thinking about how tasty it will be to eat some, and, uh, and the wonderful taste you will be experiencing, the parts of your body that are required for tasting of the food, which is your tongue and saliva, might become active. So imagining when you have sexual interaction with, a, with, with breasts and with a woman, so naturally those parts of your body which are required for sexual interaction are likely to become active because you are using your mind and imagination to, to, to become engaged in them. So your body quite naturally 
and starts to accommodate that, to allow that to happen uh, physically. Uh, now, uh, thinking and salivating over food all day, all day is not such a good idea. The same goes for sex. Being excited over sex all day is not such a good idea. Do not tease yourself and do not let others tease, which is manipulate your mind into thinking in such a manner. So, how about you getting a, a, a commercial of a particular place you want to visit? Or a commercial of a particular eatable thing you want to <coughs> have eat, you want to eat or drink, whatever it is, and just constantly play that over and over and over again. It would be kind of silly. <coughs> no, you want to actually experience it. So the same thing of watching over and over again a sexual program, <coughs> depicting various sexual whatever that you would like to engage in, that's salivating you, making you salivate. It's not such a good idea. Sexually, that is, you're salivating sexually, and you're just teasing yourself. Uh, what the heck for? <laughs> All right. <clears throat> just keeps your body in a, and mind in a state of height, uh, and it de de depletes your body of energy, and a whole bunch of other stuff which we talked about. <clears throat> Inside 148, many societies around the world have been exposed and ingrained in much incorrect thinking about sex. I find it necessary to be very blunt. My blunt, bluntness at many instances might remind you of certain se sexual instances which we are trying to avoid. Nonetheless, they must be covered because of the oceanic depth oceanic depth of incorrect thinking that many people have been exposed to from various sources. These people must look, must look at sexuality head-on, demystify it, and free themselves from any and all of its negative influences. All right, so... Um, <clears throat> filming yourself? <laughs> it's a good idea. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> right, so while we're trying to be blunt here, so um, we had talked about a long time ago about how we have <clears throat> we have here we're dealing with incorrect information, manipulative, right? highly very powerful, which we are trying to avoid, but it's hooked in the mind, so you cannot avoid it. I try as you might, I would say I'm going to guess 1% of the population can avoid it and get along with other things in life, but still the mind is hooked. And all, it, all it takes is for them to accidentally view something or see something or uh, it's possible for them to go back to engage in, engaging in this uh, 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 negative activity. So, what I say is face it and look at it honestly and demystify it. Learn it, figure it totally out so it's no longer a puzzle to you therefore this is the winning move and as you're doing this as you're trying to figure out how to solve this problem how to understand it you might sometimes fall into 
or many times fall into sexual pleasure and get involved in self-pleasure or trying to get involved in sexual activities and this and that. I would recommend not getting involved in sexual activities, but if you want to self-pleasure, okay, that is the best thing. Uh, the, the, the less, uh, lesser of the, uh, of, uh, of the negativities. Uh, all right, so when you get into this, uh, you're trying to solve it, and you fall into sometimes into uh, pleasure, but this is the only way in, in to the solution, and that's all right. Somebody might say, no, I don't want to focus on this trying to solve it because I get sexual when I try to solve it. Well, there's no other way to solve it. You have to try to solve it. <laughs> and a simple example of that would be, let's say you're in the shower and you have, uh, you, you're dirty. You were outside, you got some mud on yourself. You got some mud on your face, okay? Yeah, yeah you, want, you got some mud on your face, how are you going to wash it? You get some soap, and you actually have to physically touch it. Get the mud off. You can't get the mud off without touching it. You know, generally, this is how you have to do it. Uh, something has to touch the mud to get it off, and you do it. You, do, you wash it, and you get it off. Uh, so this is how to cleanse it. You're not going to say, Oh, I'm not going to touch the mud, because I'm trying to avoid the mud. So why would I touch the mud to cleanse myself? Well, there's no other way to clean it. You have, you know, you have to clean it. You take the soap and you wipe it off, and then you wash your hands and you wash here. This is how you get it off. That's what we're doing here, okay? <laughs> Somebody incorrectly might say, Oh, no, you, you want to avoid the mud, so don't touch it. That would be the wrong thing to do. No, that's just an incorrect way of thinking. It's the same with sexual misinformation. If somebody says, oh, don't try to solve it by focusing on how it works and you might fall into uh, you know, self-pleasure, this is clearly not the right way because you're trying to avoid self-pleasure and avoid sexual pleasure and all this stuff. So obviously you don't have to focus on it. No, this is wrong. You need to focus on it, learn it for what it really is, and solve it. Therefore, it has no power. Like right now, for me, it's irrelevant. Somebody tries to influence me if I see a sexual program uh, and they, they're using various, if they're using some kind of manipulative method, it's so obvious to me. It, it's, uh, um, it has no effect because I, I, I understand what they're doing, you know. It's like so, I'm so aware of it. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so uh, under inside 148, there is uh, example M2, fear of the Lord, misinterpreted. And, and uh, I use, I, I, I uh, one time I uh, recorded something about it, and so I'm going to put that at the, I'm going to give that in an audio format for you without the visual, so you could hear what I said. It refers to the word must, M-U-S-T, when I said, these people must look at sexuality head on. I explained that.